Welcome to Talk Show Promising Bangladesh, sponsored by Councilment, being anchored by me, Sinha M. Saeed. Today we have uh, two guests, very important guests here. One, Mr. On my right, Mr. Bodhilal Mozumdar, Founder Secretary of Sujan and a political analyst. And on my left is Mr. Anselot Milan, former State Minister of Khaled Administration and a political analyst uh, and BNP leader. Well, how are you? Okay, fine. Thank you. For a long time, we are having a wonderful <laughs> talks here. Thank you. My simple asking to you, you know very well there's so many things are taking place in Bangladesh. Senator in Dr. Mohammed Inus, our Nobel laureate. And what is your understanding about the whole thing? <laughs> it's very sad. My understanding, my reaction is very sad. Professor Yunus is a rock star in the world scene. He's the only Nobel laureate of Bangladesh, uh, only person who ever got Nobel Prize from uh, as a Bangladeshi. And uh, he's probably more popular uh, than any, any personality I know of around the world. And he's more popular than any uh, Nobel laureate, that's for sure. Uh, otherwise, um, I think uh, latest is 108 or so uh, of uh, Nobel laureates issued a statement uh, supporting his uh, or on his behalf. More than 100. 108. 108. I think there are 112 or so yeah. Nobel laureates who are alive. So <laughs> most of the Nobel laureates signed that statement. And uh, so it's a, it's a sad, uh, it is very sad that uh, while people around the world who are opinion makers, not only Lumen Laureate, but also world leaders from every sector of the society, government, private industry, and uh, uh, the voluntary sector, they all are big fan of Professor Yunus. But here we are doing everything possible to belittle him, to insult him, to uh, use abusive language, languages in, uh, uh, toward him. And so this is really sad. I'm, I'm saddened by all of these things. Thank you very much, Mr. Bodhiyal Mojundar. Mr. Hassel Milan, and do you think so, what Mr. Bodhiyal Mojundar just passed to the viewers? Thank you so much, asking me the same question. I don't agree with him. He said it's sad. He's a very respectable person, as we all understand. I will add up with him. It's a shameful for the country. That's the reason I am not with him. Sad, yes. The gentleman like him will say sad, but I cannot accept it. You see, 160 novelists, uh, more than 100 novelists, the world heroes, the world politicians, the president, ex-president of the United States of America, Rodham Hillary Clinton, the ex-secretary of state, Al Gore, President Barack Obama, this kind of personality, they are joined together and having a letter sent to our honorable prime minister. And do you think we feel proud? What they mention in this letter? First of all, they said, Professor Yunus, who is the inventor of the social business, zero poverty, zero carbon emission. He has a three zero zero as a, uh, theory. If I remember my, in the year nine, 2015, I was doing my PhD in International Islamic University. And Professor Dr. Yunus went to Sunway University in Malaysia. I bought a ticket to attend his meeting and to listen to his lecture. It was amazed, seeing is believing, after having his lecture, all the emirates of the, like Dr. Bodhir Alam Majumdar, they start, I mean, arguing with him, with his theory. And finally, the way he convinced them and the emirates professor, they bow down their heads. I mean, it is the unbelievable things I had seen in my own eyes in Malaysia Sanwa University. And now, it's a shameful for us. The world leaders are sending a letter because in one day, 18 corruption cases are launched against him. 18, not one, two, three. Is he a politician? 
He said earlier, I'm not going to be in politics. You remember in the year 2007. After that, what is the animosity with him? What they requested, not only about Dr. Yunus, they also requested about a free and fair election in this country, didn't they? And they also mentioned the last two consecutive terms, the election was not done properly, they said it. So what it means, the world leaders, the world heroes, they don't believe that there was an election for the last two terms. So unconstitutionally elected government can say unconstitutional words and sentences. It's a shameful our country that the person like Dr. Yunus, this government is launching case against him. Well, Dr. Badiala Mozumdar, <laughs> do you feel that Dr. Yunus is being harassed by the government? That's the perception. Sometimes perception speaks louder than the truth. And that's the perception not only of many Bangladeshis, but also uh, people around the world. And uh, that, as I said, about, uh, I think, 108 Nobel laureates and many world leaders of different sectors of the society. They feel that uh, the, he, Professor Yunus has been judicially harassed. All the cases that have been uh, that have been filed against him, uh, and those ca cases were filed uh, as a uh, not for justice, not to uh, for the cause of justice, but to harass him, to belittle him, to uh, hurt his reputation. So that's the that's the perception, and um, and um, for a person like Professor Yunus. 168 cases, and uh, I know that uh, there are politicians against whom uh, hundreds of cases. Well, I think one person I heard, uh, uh, he has 400 some cases against him. And uh, Professor Yunus, he's not a, as far as we know, he he's not a, he's not a criminal. He didn't commit any crime. And uh, 168 cases uh, filed against him. What about your view about his uh, past role? Yeah. This during the time of the then Kata government, because he wanted to plot a political party, but he could not implement it. Well, and what are the reasons behind all these things? Anybody can float a political party. In this country, our fundamental rights allows us to speak our mind, to float political parties, and to organize uh, associations or political parties. So these are these are our fundamental rights. Any citizen can do that. So he had the right to do that. But question is that he wanted to, there is a big slogan, minus two theory. Was he involved in the process? We, see, I do not know. I have, I have no evidence. And in fact, uh, the people who accuse him of a lot of things, uh, say so without any evidence. So without any evidence, it's, these are all either hearsay or just mere speculation. So I, I uh, unless I see the evidence otherwise, uh, I would not, uh, uh, I would not put importance to these these allegations. And also one thing that surprises me, the. Uh, is that in 1997, I remember uh, reading a statement by our, uh, the Prime Minister at that time, who is also the Prime Minister now. There was a microcredit summit in, in Washington, and where uh, our new Prime Minister, newly elected Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, said that uh, she was proud of Professor Yunus and the Gamin Bank and all the work the Gamin Bank has done. Uh, and uh, she was there to endorse, her, endorse his work. And uh, she also, in that summit, uh, she said that uh, there is a, uh, the Grameen Bank launched a program to mobilize uh, 100 million poor people, especially poor women around the world to get them out of poverty. And she was very proud of that initiative and she was there to endorse that initiative and I don't know what happened and this was a this was a gentleman according to our prime minister elected prime minister of Bangladesh she was as if he was as if sent from the heaven to uh, 
to uh, do something about the poverty and the uh, the poor condition of the the common people, poor people. And then, in a few years, she became a he became a really uh, enemy uh, of the government, and and there there are very unkind things said about him, and uh, very the allegations that are made without any substantiation, uh, they are unfair allegations. So uh, the world leaders, world leaders, including Nobel laureates, wanted this uh, the uh, the stoppage of this uh, judicial harassment. We also want the same thing. Uh, if he has committed any crime, if he has done anything wrong, obviously uh, uh, he needs to be brought to justice. No question about it. We are for it, but uh, he shouldn't be he shouldn't be harassed uh, for because somebody doesn't like him or somebody uh, feels somebody has a negative opinion about him. He shouldn't be harassed for it, and uh, so. We feel that there should be uh, the uh, fair trial of the of the cases that were brought against him, and if he's found guilty, that's a that's a uh, different thing. And uh, in our country, unfortunately, the rule of law uh, we we do not have rule of law prevailing in this country, and the law doesn't move on its own. It will have to be pushed forward, and uh, especially the uh, justices are done in a case where someone who is influential, who is part of the uh, ruling elites, have interest and really push push it forward. Then uh, we can expect justice. He was a political leader with uh, wide support, but he didn't have much education. So if his antecedents are disclosed, then uh, the, uh, there will be negative impact uh, about him, negative impression uh, among the people about him. So he wanted the court to intervene, and so he filed the uh, filed the filed the uh, the appeal, and this was highly unusual. And later, uh, long story short, to make the long story short, uh, later. Uh, the appellate division the, uh, accepted his appeal and overturned the High Court judgment. And uh, we sent our people to, uh, to Shundip and found out that everything he said was, was total lie. Total lie. He was well, a, he, he, and, and then the, 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 the final word is that later, uh, after the, uh, the uh, Chief Justice retired, uh, the uh, later the Supreme Court appellate division uh, uh, pronounced the judgment that this was not an appeal at all. This was done based on the fraudulent information. Mr. Miller, many things taking place in Bangladesh centering USA and there is a public perception that America is in the very, very deep of the whole politics of Bangladesh. What is your understanding? Well, why not? The United States of America, they are beside us. And the agenda of this democratic elect president, Joe Biden, to restore democracy all over the world, also human rights and corruption. These are their agenda. You see, we are a good friend of the United States of America. Millions of people have the second home in the United States of America. They are the largest importer of our garments. In other sense, largest we export nearly 40 billion to that country. They send the highest remittance in our country. They are the direct investor, highest investor of our country. They are always with us. So in this case, where we don't have any democracy, they are coming beside us. You see the report from the United States of America human rights violation. That's one of the key factors. 604 people are abducted. So all those things went pile up so like Everest. So that time America came forward. Why they came forward? Because we don't have a rule of justice. So from that ground, we don't have a democracy. Don't you see the letter, 160 
novel lawyers and other leaders sent to us, they mentioned our election was not fair. And they urged the government to have a fair election. So is it a shameful day for us? Like he said, whatever the complaint made against Dr. Yunus, it is a mere speculation that he said it. Of course, how come a head of the government say that Dr. Yunus stopped uh, the loan from World Bank for Fatma Breeze? Is there any documents? Had we seen any documents in the newspaper anywhere? We don't see any documents, but we keep on saying all those things. The same way you mentioned the minus two program. What he had to do with this minus program? People invite him because he's a Nobel laureate, he's a highly intelligent, and if he comes for the country, oh, country would run good. That's the belief of the citizen, but he doesn't believe it. He quitted that. But under what circumstances, I mean, all this complaint against him, what they said, the 160, I mean, world heroes, stop harassment. Why they say it? Because Dr. Mujumda said, we don't have a rule of law. We don't have a justice system that's working properly. That's the reason they urge. Also, they urge for that reason. Dr. Yunus has a capability. He's a creator in the social business. He's doing something. And that helps the whole world. You know that in Grameen Bank also, they have a branch in New York. You know, in Japan University and other universities, they are teaching his subject about microeconomics, micro loan, all the subjects. So that is the reason the world leaders are asking him. Isn't it true? So United States comes forward for us because we don't have a democracy. And we urge the United States to come forward. You see, our honorable ambassador, Peter Hass, he is trying to convince our government to have a free and fair election. Is there a free and fair election? We could not say the election is 2014 or 2018 election is fair, fair. And this government is not believing on free and fair election. So that is the reason they are coming forward to help us. Thank you, Mr. Nasko Milan. Mr. Bhoti Alonjo Mujumdar, you are a founder of Sujon, which means citizens for good government. And for a long time, you have been working in this field. And almost you are an icon in this, in this field. So do you feel that election, coming to the 12th parliament, will be free and fair if there is no change of government, full government during the time of elections? I don't know. I am not an astrologer, so I can't say that whether there will be free and fair election. But we all want and pray and hope that uh, next election will be free and fair and credible. Because last two elections were not uh, free and fair and credible. And in fact, there were, they were uh, last election especially were fraudulent election. And uh, so the... Uh, the government that was formed was not uh, based on the concept of the people. And uh, that, if the government is not uh, formed with the concept of the people, the question of legitimacy arises. And uh, so I hope next election will be different, where people will have the opportunity to cast their vote and have the government of their choosing, uh, the government they, they want uh, to rule for them. And uh, without that, we'll be, we'll be heading toward uh, difficult future. In fact, uh, in an, uh, we'll be heading toward an uncertain future. And uh, so I hope uh, for the sake of the people of this country and uh, to ensure the democratic rights of the, uh, of the people of this country, uh, I hope that we have a free and fair election. In fact, uh, if we do not, it will be really unfortunate because this country was created uh, to ensure the, uh, the uh, right to self-determination. And uh, in 1970, uh, the Pakistanis denied our voting rights in the sense that uh, Bongo Bandhu and Awami League won the majority seat uh, in 1970 election. But he was, he was not allowed to form the government, so they denied our voting rights. 
And so the Bangladesh was created uh, to establish the voting rights of the people. Now, after 52 years, we do not have the right to franchise, uh, right to vote. And it's a, it's a shame. So, uh, and if we do not have, one, once more, if we do not have that uh, right established, we will be heading toward an uncertain future, and which could be very, very dangerous future. You have pointed out very, very, very clearly that within the 52 years, we are not in a position still to have the democratic institutions as a political party, as the parliament or the election commissions. Is it not true that all the political parties more or less are liable for all these things? Yes. See, in in last 52 years, we have not been able to develop a, a peaceful means of transferring power and a sustainable democratic system. And, and during this time, uh, our politicians and some uh, the military rulers too, they ruled and they, they all failed. In a sense, we all failed as a nation to have, have a democratic, sustainable democratic system. And it needs to end. Uh, otherwise, uh, it will spell serious uh, the, uh, uh, trouble for, for the entire nation. So I hope uh, it changes. I hope the 12th parliament election will be free, fair, and credible, and where uh, all the major political parties will participate. And uh, and we had one-side election in 2016. One-side election is no election at all. Election by very definition means choice. Choice among alternatives, credible alternatives. And if we do not have credible alternatives, there is no election. And the 2018 election was, was I said, fraudulent. It was uh, ruling party and the the uh, law enforcement agency, uh, a section of bureaucracy, uh, in connivance with the with the election commission, they had uh, this fraudulent election, and uh, which brought us to very difficult uh, um, a difficult situation right now. But what is your realization about the political leaderships in Bangladesh? As a whole, well, uh, the the political leadership has failed, unfortunately, to uh, to, uh, to fulfil the aspirations and the commitment of our of our freedom fighters, valiant freedom fighters. And uh, when political uh, political leaders fail, we all fail because they represent us. And uh, so uh, we, as a nation, we have failed. So it's time to to uh, do something about it, to remedy that situation. And uh, I hope we have a uh, negotiated settlement of the of the uh, dispute we have. We have a dispute about the election time government. BNP wants caretaker government to be brought back, and now Milik said that no, uh, the election will be held under the party in power. Do you feel and, any dialogue between two political parties? Right now, we don't see a sign. But you feel so. Uh, What's is your understanding? I think. I think. See, if we do not solve our problem ourselves, then somebody else or the events may go out of hand, and things will be settled in a way that uh, that may not be uh, uh, conducive to our interest. So uh, I hope we we come to the see the 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 problem cannot be solved on the street. And uh, no problem uh, gets solved on this street. Thank you very much. No problem can be solved on this street, Mr. Hassan Abilog. You belong to BNP and you're one of the very, very important, I mean, leader also in this case, but you fought from the very beginning with student life. Is it possible to solve the problem on the street or there is a necessity of dialogue? Well, with due respect to Dr. Mazumdar, he said the political leaders failed. I don't disagree with that. I fully agree with that. But I have seen in my life, the politicians, they never failed, not such a word in my life history. We saw uh, the caretaker concept adopted by our um, ex-Prime Minister Bekam Khaled Ajia in the uh, sixth parliament. And it was passed as a 13th amendment in the legislature in the constitution and they overwrite the 15th amendment in the constitution. But the uh, abolition of the caretaker concept through 15th amendment was false 
null and void according to his written statement in the newspaper. Well, this time, as a politician, I can say there will be no more fraudulent election. We'll stop it under any circumstances. This time we are not alone. You see the 160 leaders in their letters, they said they are hoping for a good election in Bangladesh. United States of America, they are saying we are the citizens of the Bangladesh. Only India, they are in favor with Aumri. There is a perception in the street that uh, India might convince the United States and this government will remain in power. Well, we don't have any objection if there is a good election. Now, our past history is giving us a very determined answer that the election of 2014 and the election of 2018, the same way we cannot accept any election in 2024. So the election will be done by the election commission. This election commission was not empowered. The RPO hasn't changed yet anything till now. And the, His Excellency, the, uh, uh, Peter D. Hush, the ambassador of the United States, he went to the election commission and said, they have an observation team will come the next month, 8th of October, and after discussing with that observation team, the election commission can go for their election. So in this case, I believe the election commission has to be reformed or the 14 congressmen send a letter to United Nations Secretary General that the election could be conducted in Bangladesh yeah. through United Nations Peacekeeping Corps. But there is no way we can go under this government in the election because we know the next election will be fraudulent and we don't have any trust on this government. In this respect, the United States and Western allies, everybody is talking about the free and fair election. You are seeing the 160 world leaders statement asked by our country, few professors to withdraw that statement. Why they will, they will withdraw the statement? Except the doctor union's unjudicial statement, what they are saying it, rather than that they said about the human rights, they, uh, they said it the free and fair participatory election. So these are the demand only, for, not only the citizens of the Bangladesh, this is the demand from the world community. Well, thank you very much. This is the demand of the world community. Well, Mr. Budilal Mujumdar, you know very well the very policy of the Awami League, the party in power, is a development first, democracy for next. And they are trying to hammer this thing again and again. How do you analyze the whole thing? If we go back, if you look at the Declaration of Independence, what did it say? The right to self-determination, rule of law, and the justice, and all those great things. And uh, the Declaration of Independence said nothing about the development, nothing about creating infrastructure, nothing about creating flyovers. In fact, it was expected that those are the values. Uh, if we achieve those those things, the rule of law, human rights, and democracy, and the and all the good things for which we, of our valiant freedom fighters gave their lives, then the development will follow. So, without those things, democracy, good governance, human rights the development would not sustain. And in fact, it would become meaningless. And uh, say, if you are confined in a room, if you are fed and if you are, all your needs are taken care of. Uh, no, 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 uh, let me use a better example. Say, uh, we have this uh, central jail. And say, uh, in the central jail, I think uh, the central jail is uh, vacant now. Say, we, we uh, have 100 people from the country, and uh, we have their families and everybody uh, there confined in that uh, central jail. We provide everything they need, everything they need. The only, only restriction they would not be able to get out. So, how many of them will be will be happy, and how long will they be able to uh, stay there? Uh, how many of them will be willing to stay there? So, man, as the old saying goes, cannot live by bread alone. And without, without your uh, ability to speak, uh, speak 
your mind, your ability to think, your ability to do other things and enjoy the freedom, then the development becomes less meaningful. I would not say they're meaningless. So we need both. We need development. Uh, we need, uh, uh, we need uh, those important values based on which the liberation war took place. So, uh, and, and uh, the, if, the, if we achieve those things, the development, then people's government, uh, people with the concept of the government would be would be established and if they don't do their part to uh, to improve the conditions of the people the uh, the economic uh, upliftment of the people then they will be they will be thrown uh, shown red card the uh, uh, other people will be voted in so those will be will be inevitable those will, those will happen the the material gains material achievements but what is important is those values for which values for which our our freedom fighters uh, gave their lives and um, if if we do not have that is we are not really fulfilling the dreams of uh, our liberation thank you war. very much for the same mr hasman milo dr bodhi laram Mojunda categorically believe and is asserted that development without democracy is a misnomer. But the present Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina herself all the time beating the drum, more development, less democracy. Well, whatever he said, <laughs> how do you see it? Whatever he said, absolutely I agree with him. Sustainable development based on a sustainable democracy. Without having a democracy, the development means nothing that he explains. So do you want me to believe the United States is a developed nation? We shouldn't have practiced any democracy down there. We should not practice any human rights down there. We shouldn't practice any rule of justice down there. You mean that? One party democracy country is China or in Russia or Belarus. Are we going that far? We cannot walk that road. Well. China, don't you remember the Tiananmen Square? They killed thousands of students for the democracy. Why it is so? Democracy is the best solution. That's the reason he mentioned Article 11 of the Constitution. The People's Republic should be a democratic nation. And he mentioned earlier, in the 1970, the election, we own 167 seats, and we were the majority, but we couldn't achieve the government. We couldn't be the prime minister, the Dan. That is the reason our freedom fighting starts. Only for democracy, this country takes birth. And we are denying this thing. Whoever go, 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 gets into the power, they don't want to leave the power. So this time, the game started. People are thinking that India will, I mean, uh, overwrite the American way to bring back democracy in Bangladesh. No, it wouldn't be happen. It's a simple equation. The China, the India, the Bangladesh, the United States, the Russia. What we are trying to do? We are trying to do a war frontier in our country. Why would we? Why we had to join to the BRICS? Do we need it? Why we need a counter of World Bank? It was established in 1944 under the United Nations. So this is not our head. We are fine. So in this regards, we don't need to go to the BRICS. India can go to the BRICS. India can go to the IPS. India can go to the court. But for us, India objected. You see, everything has changed. It will change more. And United States of America, they will not look through the Indian eyes. They will look through their own eyes. That is the reason I believe this time we, the citizens of the country, we are not alone anymore. The peoples, it is a global village. We need the help from the, all over the world to restore our democracy. Don't you see, a few days ago, in England, in the London, how many thousands of people marched in the street. The same thing will be happen in, the, in front of United Nations. All the Bangladeshi will come forward. They want their voting rights. There is no way to give up. In the year 2014, the new voters did not vote, did not exert their rights. In the years 2018, they could not. Do you think in the year of 2024, the same thing will happen? We will 
we will allow them to let this thing happen again? No way. That's the reason we said we'll go to the street, we'll fight for it, and we think that we will own. Thank you very much, Mr. Milan. Mr. Bodhiyalal Mozumda, you are a veteran political, I mean, analyst at the same time. You are very much aware of what is happening in Bangladesh all the time. What is your message about development and democracy and the Western world and the political parties in Bangladesh in general? Well, we need both. But uh, democracy should come first. Then development will follow. And that's the way it has been uh, in many countries. That's the way it should. Otherwise, the, uh, the uh, development will not sustain, unfortunately. You see, the world leaders in 2015, they agreed to uh, implement uh, SDGs, uh, Sustainable Development Goals. And uh, the goal 16 is about democracy. The goal 16 is about good governance, inclusiveness. So the, the, this is a package. We need, we need uh, food, we need uh, shelter, we need... Uh, Good environment. We need uh, all the all, all the other things, material things. At the same time, we also need the rights. And so, world leaders uh, agreed to achieve all of these. So, all of these must be achieved together, and uh, not one uh, or the other. So, together, and uh, we we feel that uh, the if we are to have the uh, democratic system uh, prevail in this country, a sustainable democratic system, then people will have to act. People have to ask for it. And people have to, uh, 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 have to unless they demand it, unless they ask for it, um, then it will not happen. So uh, a aware citizen and organized citizens, mobilized citizens, and citizens who speak out, and uh, that's the only way to achieve these rights. Otherwise, uh, nobody will give us our rights. We'll have to Thank you earn very those much, rights. Uh, Dr. Bodhilal Mazumdar. Mr. Hasanak Milan, what Dr. Bodhilal Mazumdar concluded by saying that there should be mobilized people there, and development means sustainable development. What is your message? Well, before I give this message, I will address to Mr. Mazumdar a little bit. Your time is one minute. Oh my God. <laughs> well, in the year of 2008, the election, that election, the election commission, the withdrawal, they, uh, they accepted the mobile telephone to be used. And that's how they started rigging in the center and they started mob attack in the center. This time also mobile telephone is allowed. Secondly, next election commissioner, they put uh, what do you call the negative vote. This election commission withdrawal the negative vote. And I was a victim, first victim. I went to the high court, I won the case. But it takes more than five years. The parliament is over. I did not get my verdict. Later on, the Supreme Court gave a verdict. But it is not still in the website of the Supreme Court that whether I own or not, they are like this. Anyway, democracy needs to be developed. It means the precondition of the development is democracy. As I said, all the good nations and developed nations, they are based on democracy. If you go to the Eskandarian country, they have a pure democracy, isn't it? In Japan, pure democracy. United States, pure democracy. India is the highest democracy. I'm the biggest democracy in the world. But for India, the neighbor of Bangladesh, we don't have a democracy. Don't you remember in the year of 2014, the Indian Foreign Secretary Shudata Singh came in this country and they overruled the election. In the year 2018, all over the world, they deny the election was good. Everybody said the election was not fair. Even 160 leaders, they sent a letter that the election was not fair. But the Prime Minister of India, he accepted this election was good. The same thing to China. So they are looking for their industry. It is not our interest. We need democracy, then we need a development. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Anderson Milan, and thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bodhir Mozundar. Well, this is a, this, we are almost about to end this talk show, 
And before that, we'd like to summarize the whole thing, what the speakers concluded here. Both of them were very high of the democracy of Bangladesh. At the same time, they emphasized without democracy, there can be no development. Development must follow democracy because the basis of the development is democracy. At the same time, they spoke openly about Professor Dr. Muhammad Inus, and they believe that fair and free justice we should be made open to Mr. Mo, Dr. Mohamed Inus. And we believe that everything will take place in Bangladesh for the sake of democracy, peace, and tranquility. And we also believe that only the possible way to survive is sustainable democracy, sustainable development. And thank you very much. We'll meet you again in the next episode. Okay.